Hey you guys, it's Christy with Christy Cole Artistry and tonight I'm working on an 18 by 24 level 1 canvas. I've already taped the back of the canvas, I've put my push, push pins in, and I've leveled the canvas. But before we get started, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, how I mix my paints. Um, if you haven't seen my video number 1, please watch that. That one will tell you exactly how I mix my paints. But for any of my paints, it doesn't matter if it's Liquitex Basics, um, my Artist Loft, my Master's Touch, my Deco Art, I mix all of my paints the same. I use 80 grams of Floetrol, 40 grams of paint, and 30 grams of water. And then, yes, I do weigh them on a scale. Um, that ratio is 150 grams of paint, and that's what I use for this size bottle. Um, if I'm mixing a smaller bottle, such as my little Extreme Sheen here, if I'm using this size bottle, see, so it's a lot smaller, I will then um, split the, um, the measurements in half and I'll use 20 paint, 40 Floetrol, and 15 water. That ratio has worked for me. Um, I haven't had a problem with it. I do know that Master's Touch paint for me has been a little bit thicker. So after I mix it up and let it set, um, usually I mix my paints at night and then I let them set till the next day. Um, if the paint is still thick, I will add some more water to my Master's Touch. Um, I had a problem when I first started using Master's Touch, but um, now that I kind of know that, um, when I'm mixing it, sometimes I will add a little bit of water if it's thick right away. You can tell when you start mixing your paint for the different um, companies like Deco Art and Liquitex Basic. When you start shaking them and, and feeling them, you'll know if they're the same or if they're thicker. So just watch for that, and then if they are, add a little bit of water at a time until it's at the consistency of the rest of them. Another way of checking that is just take a piece of paper and take your colors that you're planning on using. Do a drop on them, okay? Then when you put it up like this, you'll be able to tell if they're the same because your drop should um, roll down the page to the same level, okay? And that will tell you, it's like a drip test, it'll tell you whether or not all of them are flowing the same as each other. If they're not, take your thicker one and thin it out. It's easier than thickening the other ones. Okay, so again, uh, 40 paint, 80 Floetrol, 30 um, water, and I like that ratio. I've tried using just uh, paint and water, don't like it. I like to use all of my paints, so I will also use my Walmart paints, and then I have some um, well, there's another, I forgot the other one, um, another uh, less expensive paint, but they have so many beautiful colors that I can't pass it up. So I will use them with my other, um, other paints, and I have many a time and have come out beautiful results. So I don't have a problem using the lesser expensive paints with my, um, my uh, regular paints. So what I'm going to do then is I am going to flood this canvas with white. Um, note on my white paint. I have not been able to get a hold of any um, Artist Loft Flow Acrylic 2019 or before paint, so I am not using um, Artist Loft Flow Acrylic for my for my flood paint. I have gone to using Blick, and I mix Blick just like I do with everything else, flow trail and water, and it's been working just fine. I just have to make sure that when I put it on the canvas, I blow it out first so that it's not um, too much on there. Um, other than that, I haven't had any problems with it, um, and I've been using it for probably the last few, four, five, six videos, and the paintings are coming out beautiful, so I'm going to stick with that. Okay, so uh, one more thing before we get started is tonight's color palette is going to be a little different than usual. I'm going to be using some magentas, um, crimson, uh, garnet, berry. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use some gold. So it's going to be sort of a fall, fall color. I'm going to call it fall colors. So let me get the, the painting or the, the canvas flooded, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, I am back, and I flooded my canvas, and now we are going to go about popping the bubbles. Torch them. Torch 
those things. I'm torching these bubbles just so that they don't pop through the paint and then um, when they pop through the paint they look they look like little uh, white pinholes. And I don't like that. I need to smooth this out a little bit more. I know my canvas is level, but this corner is not cooperating. There we go. That's better. That's a little better. Alright. So, this will smooth out in a little bit here. Alright, let's get those bubbles. So tonight, like I said, we um, here in Minnesota are coming into fall now, and I haven't done any um, reds or oranges or any of that stuff um, in quite some time, so that's what I'm going to do tonight. Alright, so our colors for tonight are going to be on the, I'm going to call it the, the fall leaf color. Although I'm not going to put any orange in it, I decided. I don't like how it mixes with it. Okay, first color is going to be Liquitex Basic Conacridome Magenta. Okay. Then we're going to also use DecoArt Extreme Sheen Berry. I'm going to turn them this way so you can see the color palette together. Then I'm going to be using Metallic... Um, uh, Deco Art Extreme Sheen Metallic 24 Karat Gold. I've got my Liquitex Basic Alizarin Crimson Hue Permanent. Then I'm going to add some Deco Art Extreme Sheen Garnet. And just for a little highlight, um, I'm also going to add this Deco Art Extreme Sheen Rose Quartz. I love this color. So there are my six colors for tonight. I have no idea what this is going to turn out looking like, but I like the colors together. So we're going to try it. I haven't done anything in a um, singular color palette in a while, other than blues, and I always love blues, but I thought it would be nice to try something a little more um, fall. So I see some more bubbles popping up, so I want to get those taken care of now. take that out of there. Okay, so let's get started. And I decided um, this is going to be a fall painting. So I think I'm going to go back and do a corner. Um, I haven't done a corner one in a few videos. So I am going to do the, let's see, which one? Do, do, do. And do, do. Yep, I'm going to do these two corners instead of these two. So these two corners. Okay. So we're starting out with our Liquitex Basics Quinacridone Magenta. Okay. My goal will be to blow these just to accent the corners and leave a lot of white space. Okay. So that's how we're going to go. All right. Next is Extreme Sheen Berry. It's a little tight there. These, each of these colors have just enough um, different hue to them that I think when they blow out they'll, they'll accent each other, except for the gold of course. The gold always has to be the star of the show. That's okay. Gold berry magentas looks really pretty together. Okay, next is Al's, I'm probably saying this wrong, Alizarin Crimson Hue Permanent. Just found this Liquitex Basic Color at my local, uh, where is that Michaels? Michaels or, uh, was it Joanne Fabrics? I'm not sure. One of the two had a, had a sale on paint, so I went and stocked up again and I found that one. 
I don't often find colors I don't have, unless I go over to Blick. Blick has tons of colors I don't have, but right now I just don't have room for them. Okay, um, and lastly is my DecoArt Rose Quartz. I think we just need a little, um, a little pink. And I like pink. Okay, so this is what we've got now. Now, I'm not saying it did, other than the pink, but we also are starting school here now. And um, if any of you know Minnesota College, we have the Minnesota Gophers, and their colors are crimson and gold. So maybe it's just that. Okay, um, so I'm going to torch these colors because I don't want any bubbles popping up in them. And it's giving me, by setting them, it's giving some time for them to kind of settle in before we blow it out. And I think, because I'm using the small corners, I was going to go with this bigger one tonight, um, but I think just because of um, how I want this to come out, I don't want to cover the whole painting, and I think the bigger one might force me to do that. So I am just going to use the little one we've been using. Okay? All right, I'm going to start on low. As you know, I have high, low, and then I have my power button here. Always have to use the power button um, because the low is really low, but if I use the high, paint will fly all over the place, and I don't want that. So here we go. I'm going to also, I'm going to be blowing from these centers first and then bringing these up. So these may go up a little higher, but um, the idea, like I said, is to keep this section um, clear of paint. So here we go. are not flowing as good as I want them to. Um, I got the drip over I wanted here, but not over here, so I do need to add a little bit more paint. I didn't want to overdo it because I didn't want too much going on, but I'm just going to add, like I said, a line of each again, because I really do want it to flow over the corners, but not to the middle. So that's why I was trying to be careful not to use too much paint, but um, I tend to either overdo or underdo. And I'm not going to shoot as much gold in here because I think we have enough gold. So I'm just going to do a light, a light ribbon of gold this time. I love the colors though. The colors are beautiful. We just need to blow over the side a little bit more. So what do you think about this color palette? I don't normally go with um, any kind of reds or pink. Or, well, I like pinks. But I don't really do a lot with red or um, um, like this crimson would not be a color I would normally choose. I love the magentas. Magentas I like. Um, but the crimsons and, and stuff, I they're a little dark for me. Okay. Which is strange because m most of my house is painted red. Okay, I noticed that I got a little bit there. All right, let's blow this out again. Okay, again I'm going to go from this front, both ways.
much better. I did lose lose a little bit here. <clears throat> and <clears throat> oh my goodness, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I lost a little bit here. So I need to dress that up a little bit. And I really kind of want some over here too. So I'm just going to do a, just a little puddle pour there um, to get myself some a little more blow out there. I don't mind the cells that were happening. It's just this I want it out more. And I think I want these a little bit longer. But it's starting to drip over the sides nicely, so that's good. Yeah, there is a, for me anyway, there's a fine line between putting too much paint on there and everything pouring off and having enough to get um, the composition that I'm looking for to flow. So, practice makes perfect. And I always say, there's someone that says, I think it's Jilly Cube that says, um, you know, there's nothing, nothing you can't fix or something to that effect. Okay, here we go. Hopefully one more, or hopefully this will be the last time, but we'll see. I worked better than I was hoping. That's kind of more what I was looking for. This one got a little lopsided, so we will fix that. Because that just doesn't look like it belongs there. So I'll work on that. Um, I have to fix my sides because they're not dripping down as nice as I wanted. I've got a funky little bubble popping up here. And um, so I'm going to play with this, fix the sides and everything, and then I'm going to bring you down. I love the colors. The colors are very pretty. It's just, um, this looks like literally exactly what I did. I just plopped it in there. So I need to fix that. Um, and I lost some gold down here, so I may add a little bit there. But I will fix all this, and then I will bring you down and show you the final product. I'll be right back.
Okay, so here is the final painting. I do like the colors. Um, this petal came out a little bit lighter than I was hoping. I like this one now. The gold is popping over in the corner over there. And um, as things come up, um, I'm hoping, like you said, that this one fills in a little bit more. There are cells popping up through there. Um, it's definitely fallish to me. Um, so let's let's go in and take a look. It's going to have a lot of shimmer because a lot of these extreme sheens shimmer. So once this um, dries, we should have a lot of shimmer and shine going on just from all the extreme sheens I used. But here is the petal that I'm hoping will continue. See, there's some cells popping here. I'm hoping that this will end up a little bit more like this one over here. But we'll see. It's still really pretty. And it, this is all going to dry darker, and I think it will be just gorgeous. I haven't decided if I'm going to high gloss this one or if I'm going to um, uh, just regular gloss it. Um, both will look nice. And uh, yeah, I think it. I think it came out pretty much what how I was thinking. I have a little less white space than I wanted, and I'm hoping it doesn't shift too much. Um, I've already fixed my sides, and I have um, scraped the underneath. I will do that again in 10 minutes, and then I will do it one more time after that 10 minutes is up, and then we should be good. But um, I will show you the final results at the end of the video, wet results, and then in one of my next videos, I will show you the dry results. So thank you all for watching tonight, and um, again, thank you to my subscribers. Please like and subscribe. Glad to have you on this little trek with me. And until next time, bye.